Okay. How you doing? So I'm here with the most gorgeous Dan Hardy. <laughs> right, um, we're doing, you know like we do, we do the thing on the anti-bullying a lot. So um, the idea is to make everyone aware that sometimes our perception is it's just us. And, well, there's two things, there's two perceptions. One perception is that guy's not getting bullied, that's just banner. But if it's personal to that person, if it hurts them, then it's, it's unique to them and it, it matters. And then the other perception is vice versa, is how we feel about it ourselves now, how we get over it. So, has anything ever happened to you? Yeah, uh, when I first started school, I was uh, five, and uh, a couple of years later, a new kid joined the school, who obviously, coming into the school later, kind of felt like he needed to make a name for himself. And was he your age? Uh, he was, he was the same class as me. Okay, um, so how I old was, was he? Uh, I, we was, what, seven, maybe? So you are and, and we carry this stuff, yeah, yeah, so. Yeah, um, and, uh, he decided I was an easy target in school, so he focused on me and just kind of ba basically made me the, the punchline of a lot of his jokes to kind of build his At own. At this point, was you just a normal kid or was you already knowing you like fighting or training or anything? Um, I not, no, I start, not started martial arts at this point. In fact, no, it would have been earlier then because I started because of him and I started training when I was six. So it would have been five, it would have been just as we started school. Cool. Um, uh, and then the other one, my, my other experience of being bullied was my first martial arts instructor. Wow. Yeah, um, he was. Uh, I I went to a school, a ta taekwondo school, that had two instructors. One of the instructors I continued working with until until my twenties. Uh, the other one worked with all the children, and he was he was a real bully. He didn't get on with my mum, and uh, when she wasn't there, it, it, it was taken out on me. Wow. You know, see, that's that's something to forget about as well. So bullying goes in loads of forms. Um, it can go in like uh, school and or your parents or work or wherever. So. Again, what the, the point I'm saying is you might look at Dan and Michael Bisping and the other people who have been kind enough to do the videos and you think it's you, but we've all gone through it. And as customer, I would say, everyone feels fear, it's how we deal with it, it makes us a champion or not. So the first thing is acceptance. It doesn't really matter. Uh, it's our past, so we've got to leave it there. But um, what was the other thing I was going to ask you? Is there been anything since, since you was older or you cleared it? And then, then do you still carry it? Well, uh, interestingly, I've not really dealt with the uh, my martial arts instructor being a bully until a couple of years ago, um, and I was actually in a yoga class, and I really got deep into stretching, and I re I remember that he used to use stretching almost as a punishment if we weren't you know training hard enough or whatever, and uh, he was quite forceful in the positions, which was you know obviously dam quite damaging physically yeah. at that age, um, and I'd actually stretched into muscles that had not been stretched, and, and you know since I was that young. And that was almost what released the, the emotion for me. Um, so that was that was quite a recent thing. I, so I, have I you know, seen him ever since? I've uh, never, I've not seen him since. No. Oh, cool. And, and I've got a feeling he'd be he'd be all right with you. Anyway. I'm sure he would. I'm sure he would. And I'd be fine with him. You know, it's it's his drama. And I think that's something that I learned from from being you know in the public eye and being a fighter because I get obviously there's loads of stuff on the internet, loads of people making comments on Twitter and that kind of stuff, Facebook. But I realised at one point that it's it's actually not me that it's aimed at, it's a reflection of who they are inside, mm, it's yeah. a reflection of the person that the, they are. The biggest thing you said as well was the reason why you started martial arts was because of that guy. Yeah. So in theory, you have a lot to thank him for. Oh yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Because there's other people I work with very closely, like Jeff Thompson, and he, he openly says in his book he was sexually abused by his martial arts instructor, and he's written books and um, BAFTA award winning writer, and he's done films and loads of stuff. and that energy or what you said you released when you was doing the yoga, we, we hold that a little bit without realising. But you can use that to positive if you're aware of what it is and don't use that as a constraint to hold you back. So yes, you may be getting it at work or had it at work or had it as a child, but you can use the energy in a positive as long as you can let it go. And I say this a lot as well, ego is a weird thing. I know it, I can understand it more as a man. So for instance, I say this a lot in my classes. If someone comes up and slaps me around the face because they're drunk or something, it's only once. That's not being attacked, yeah? Self-defense should be when I feel like, oh, I'm getting attacked and I've got something to do. If he hits me once and I hit him back, that's my ego. That's the part of me that's saying, oh no, he's not allowed, who does he think he is? I'm not having that. Or, it's, or your friends, the same thing, which is another type of bullying. Oh, you're gonna accept that. You're gonna... You don't need to listen to anyone else. I, it's okay for me. If someone hits me, for me to say, or they do something stupid or push me in a club or something, it's okay to say, I forgive him, he's drunk. Or I forgive him, he's an idiot. Or whatever, whatever thing in your head, you don't have to buy into fighting back. 
Now, Ben's more than capable of dealing with the violent situation, but he's also aware that he's not going to fight his Taekwondo instructor about the issues he had when he was years ago, but he still had to be aware that that affected him and let him go. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Because if we carry it, it's rubbish. Yeah. So, um, that was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> right, should we, do, um, should we do a technique? Yeah, People are asking yeah. to do a technique, so we're going to do something different. Dan's going to show you briefly, um, MMA-wise, what you'd normally do from a guillotine choke, yeah? yeah? So if I've got me in a guillotine, can you yep. see, see this all right, actually, side? So what do you normally do from here? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is hand fight. I'm going to try and create some space because I don't want this tightening any more than it already is. So as you're squeezing that in, I'm trying to get a hand in here. The oh. next thing I'm trying to do is get a hand on the elbow and I'm, trying, I'm going to try and push this into the, into the side of my own head. And as I'm doing that, I'm going to step around. I'm going to circle towards you. Keeping pressure on this, keep pressure on your elbow, and then when I feel like I can, I'm going to start to reach around the outside of you, and you can feel my shoulder actually drive your arm off of my head. So if you sit from this angle again, as I come in around here, this shoulder of my own, as I start to reach around your back, you're going to start to. Can you feel that pressure? As yeah. You know? It circles my head out. And take it back. And I take it back. Beautiful, right, so what we do, we do two concepts, we do it as the MMA and then we do it as a street self-defense thing. So if he guillotines me now, what he needs to do normally to put this on is to posture up a little bit. So what we do, we create a barrier to stop that. So if you lower again, I put one hand over and pull down and I put one against the fire here. So if you try and put it on there. Yeah, I can't. So I'm stopping it already. Now we're talking about, I don't want to be here while his mates kicking me or punching me or worse, using a weapon. So as soon as you grab, Throw your hips back, keep your head up, wrestlers next, it's very hard to get on. Turn your head in. One, you can bite, but more importantly now, his arm's not on my throat anymore, so we're here. What I'm going to do for me is knee, posture up, it's quite hard. I want you to hold on tight here just to prove this works. As I posture up, it's quite hard to hold. Peel off the thumb, here, and let go. Posture up, and then we're going to shoot straight in for the arm Yeah. Now what makes this work beautiful is pull his head over, because sometimes if they know what they're doing, they're going to defend by pushing the elbow back. So if you push your elbow back a bit, but you think they're out, what you do, get the eye, put it back over, <coughs> and yeah. it's back on again. Works, right? Tight straight away. Yeah. So this is good. A lot of people <coughs> find this, sorry, you're right. When we're here, he's just had a whiskey. That's nothing to do with me. He's been drinking whiskey and he's got <coughs> <laughs> Right, so I'm here. I can't get this on because he starts pushing with his elbow to defend. Grab the eye, pull him right in. Get the forearm across here, that's what stops the blood. Mm. So this is tight here, that's there. Gable grip and then tuck it straight. And you can also use him to defend yourself against more than one person. So we're in there. Yeah, that's yeah. tight straight away, that is right across. Yeah. Mate, right, it's your eyes water. Yeah. Right across the Most people right will try and, like if you went for the arm triangle, the defense is they're gonna push or they're gonna go here. Yeah. So what you do with your other hand, pull my eye, tighten me in, and now move around there, Mark, and now, right, right, now right, it's right. on whether I like it or not. Right. Because it goes straight across there. Don't really effective. <laughs> really effective, I like that. I hope you like it. Um, two things. Uh, you can go on the website to see anybody and stuff. Um, and it's very important, especially the young ones we're trying to reach here as well. You've got to talk about it because holding it's no good. So if you can't, if you don't feel like I didn't have the right people around me when I was a kid to maybe explain it to, but there's loads out in there, especially online. So just write in anti bullying. You can either come to mmacrabmagar.com or you can just search anti bullying online and there's loads. Have a great day. Thank you very much. Oh, where are we, by the way? Rotterdam. Rotterdam. And who's fighting? Over in Molosky. Right. So we'll stand on television. He's <laughs> a beautiful man. See you later. Thanks a lot. Bye.